Alright, hello guys and welcome back or welcome to Phantom Weather Channel. For today's video, we're going to be talking about a very major and possibly historic uh, major winter storm uh, up in the Rockies into the High Plains that could drop multiple feet of snowfall in those regions there. On the other note, it's going to possibly bring a severe weather outbreak to the south uh, along with some heavy rain and flooding that is possible. And in the middle of this entire mess, we're also looking at the potential for heavy ice accumulations in spots as well. Uh, so before I do hop into this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you like my videos and want to see more. I'll be sure to drop a like on the video and share this video out if you want other people to see it as well. Well, let's hop right into it. Let's take a look at our current National Weather Service hazards here. In these dark greens here throughout the central United States where we're seeing flash flood watches in effect, uh, all of these lighter greens in the middle of them are uh, flood advisories and flood warnings here. Uh, the other side of concerning our winter storm here, uh, you can see in northern Colorado, western Nebraska, uh, southwestern South Dakota, and also a good majority of Wyoming and uh, Utah as well, we have widespread uh, winter weather uh, warnings, advisories, and watches here that are currently in effect like we said this could bring multiple feet of snow and could be historic into the rockies and the high plains uh, first of all, let's take a look at our day one categorical outlook that has been issued by the Storm Prediction Center here. And as you can see, we have a slight risk of severe thunderstorms uh, throughout western Oklahoma into western Texas here. Uh, we also have a marginal risk in this dark green um, and also a threat of seeing some uh, general non-severe storms in this light green surrounding it. Our biggest threat here is going to be uh, a few tornadoes and potentially some scattered very large hail here. So let's take a look at our tornado outlook first off. And you can see in northwest Texas here and southwestern in Oklahoma, we have a 5% chance of seeing a tornado touchdown within 25 miles of a given location here. As far as tornadoes go, this is actually a pretty good risk. Uh, this was this would mainly be throughout this uh, later this afternoon into the evening here. Uh, in this green shade, we have a 2% chance within 25 miles of a given location here. Here would be our hail outlook, and as you can see, not only do we have a 50% chance of, of uh, hail here, that would automatically give us our slight risk here in western Oklahoma and western Texas, but in this black hatched area, we have a chance of seeing some significant hail, so some very large hail is possible in these uh, hatched areas here, uh, which means greater than 2 inches in diameter. So within in this uh, uh, black hatched area and this yellow risk is where we have a 15% chance of seeing a uh, scattered significant very large hail within 25 miles of a given location here. Of uh, this 5% area is where we have a 5% chance of seeing some hail. Um, this would be our day one wind outlook here and a little bit more narrow. Uh, we have a threat that we maybe could be looking at some damaging winds within 25 miles of a given location as well. A 15% chance of that. Corresponding with our severe weather risk today, here would be our excessive rainfall outlook. You can see throughout uh, northern Oklahoma, southern Kansas, southern Missouri, southern Illinois, western Kentucky, northwest Tennessee, and northern Arkansas. We have a slight risk of excessive rainfall here. This means there is a 10 to 20% chance of seeing excessive rainfall exceed flash flood guidance within 25 miles of a given location here. Our 5 to 10% area here is where we have that marginal risk of excessive rainfall. We're actually going to break um, our day one outlook here down um, and thorough here. So here will be by 6 p.m. Central Standard Time uh, this evening here. They said that the severe storms, uh, the biggest likelihood would be later this afternoon into the evening. So as you can see, we have a lot of temperatures here by 6 p.m. that are going to be in the upper 70s in southern Oklahoma and northern Texas here uh, in areas of our slight risk. Um, we also have multiple temperatures that are going to be in the mid to upper 50s and also a good majority of our slight risk area here. As we look at our dew points, uh, we're looking for anything over 55 in order to be sufficient for a service-based thunderstorm to occur. But we're talking about severe weather. We're looking really for over like these 60s. And the higher it goes, the better off that we're going to be here. And a lot of our slight risk area, we are seeing a widespread uh, dew points that are going to be over 60, uh, maybe even getting close to 70 on the eastern side of it here. So uh, overall, our temperatures and dew points are going to be pretty good for severe weather. So when we look at our CAPE here, CAPE stands for Convective Available Potential Energy here. Um, and it's basically the measurement of energy in the atmosphere that is sufficient for thunderstorms to occur here. When we're talking severe weather, we're looking at anything over a thousand capes. So anything over these uh, bluish gray shades is where we're seeing uh, energy sufficient for severe weather to occur here. Uh, many areas in our slight risk are seeing well over a, a thousand cape here, getting close to uh, 2,000 cape in some areas here. So these thunderstorms are going to have a pretty easy time getting going by 6 p.m., but could even start a little bit earlier here. Uh, so here would be our radar uh, by 6 p.m. According to our NAM model here, we do have some 
uh, potential thunderstorms popping up at this time here. Also, let's just take this to 9 p.m. And as you can see, we still have multiple temperatures in the upper 60s here in some of our slight risk region, lower 60s as well, closer to Texas. Our dew points are still going to be uh, relatively high. Uh, many of them are going to be again over 60 in many areas here. Therefore, our cape will still be pretty high, uh, with most of our slight risk uh, being under a cape over 1,000, which means that the energy is sufficient for severe weather in the atmosphere here. And when we do take a look at our simulated radar, you can see that this is definitely the case. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, thunderstorm activity going on throughout western Texas and northern Oklahoma. And of course, this is every three hours, and the storms may have already actually started throughout the late afternoon here. Uh, so because of that, um, we could already see some more storms get going in between that, but that was for 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. Uh, so what we're going to do now is break down our upcoming risk uh, just briefly, and then we'll go into the uh, simulated model run here, um, and eventually some maps at the end so that we can see the snowball and the ice. All of that is coming up in just a second. All right, and as far as all of the severe weather risks that we have here, I think tomorrow is going to be the worst day, and I think that's specifically for western Oklahoma and northwestern Texas here. The Storm Prediction Center is uh, also saying this as well. They have actually issued an enhanced risk of severe weather here, which means numerous severe storms are possible throughout western Texas and northwestern, uh, te or sir, throughout northwestern Texas and western Oklahoma here, surrounded by a slight risk in this yellow shade, a marginal risk in this dark shade, in general non-severe storms expected in this light green shade. Their biggest hazards that they're expecting is the potential for some uh, strong tornadoes and very large hail that they're thinking is going to be a pretty big possibility tomorrow. So we're really going to have to be on the lookout in many of these regions here. Let's break down our tornado risk first, and I do not like to ever see this here. On, so a 5% chance is already pretty good when we're talking tornadoes here. Now we have a 10% chance of seeing a tornado touchdown within 25 miles of a given location here. So within 25 miles of anywhere in this yellow shade, there is a 10% chance, a 1 in 10 chance of a tornado touching down, which doesn't seem like much, but when you think about it, it really is. Not only do we have a risk of seeing tornadoes in general, though, but we have a 10% chance of seeing a significant tornado within 25 miles of a given location in this entire yellow shaded area here. Uh, in this brown region or even green we could also be seeing this as well here uh, so tornadoes many of which could or, uh, even or some of which could even be strong here are possible tomorrow we do not like to see this this would be for southwestern Oklahoma and northern Texas so please stay weather aware if you are in any of these uh, risks whatsoever as we're taking a look at our hail outlook here which looks like one of our big, biggest hazards as well again throughout our entire uh, enhanced risk area here we have a 30% chance of seeing significant very large hail greater than two inches in diameter in this uh, black hatch uh, red region here uh, throughout this yellow region some of which is hatched is where we have a 15% chance of seeing the same uh, in this 5% risk here as we're or in our uh, green areas where we have a 5% chance of seeing some severe hail within 25 miles of a given location and finally here would be our damaging wind outlook here so still uh, dam significant damaging winds are not expected here but significant tornadoes and significant very uh, hail is possible a uh, significant severe hail and significant severe tornadoes uh, but we do have a slight risk here that we could be looking at some damaging winds uh 15 chance throughout texas oklahoma and kansas as well uh this five percent area or this green area is where we have a five percent chance of seeing some uh damaging winds within 25 miles of a given location here not looking like a good day whatsoever throughout the uh, southern plains here nor is it looking good for excessive rainfall uh, we're seeing a widespread slight risk which means a 10 to 20 percent chance of seeing excessive rainfall exceeds flash flood guidance within 25 miles of a given location uh, throughout northern Texas, northern Oklahoma, uh, central Kansas, and southeastern uh, Nebraska, maybe even some of far northwestern Missouri, surrounded by a, a 5 to 10 percent chance or a marginal risk of seeing excessive rainfall exceed flash flood guidance again within 25 miles of a given location here. And this would be our day three categorical outlook. So this would be for um, this would be uh, for Sunday here. And as you can see, we have a, a slight risk here that we could again be looking at some scattered severe weather here uh, throughout northwestern Mississippi and southwestern and uh, south or southwestern or southeastern and uh, east central uh, Arkansas here. Also some of far southwestern Tennessee as well. 
surrounded by this dark green shade where we have a marginal risk and also that light green shade, which is general non-severe storms expected here. Uh, we cannot get into the specifics of that severe weather day, but all we know is severe weather is still possible in the form of scattered severe weather on Sunday. So all throughout the weekend, it's looking really bad. But let's talk about snowfall in just a second here, uh, because that's also going to be a very major factor. As far as our excessive rainfall will look to correspond with this uh, throughout the uh, uh, Ozarks into the high plains here, we do have a marginal risk of excessive rainfall. Uh, now let's get, get into our simulated model run here. All of these time conversions are going to be in central standard time here. Uh, so this would be by uh, Saturday morning at uh, midnight here. Lots of widespread heavy rain and thunderstorms throughout the uh, plains into the Ozarks and the Tennessee Valley here. Uh, by Saturday morning, we're still looking at a pretty good squall line here of uh, some uh, heavy rainfall, maybe even some thunderstorm activity. As we take this to midday on Saturday, we're seeing a lot of um, a rainfall again throughout the southern plains here. Also some uh, snow firing up along with a, uh, ra a, a low pressure system that's going to be rapidly strengthening. Currently a 1,005 millibar low pressure center over western Colorado here. As we take this to us, uh, as we take this to Saturday uh, evening here, we're seeing a widespread squall line actually of heavy rainfall, many of which again, it likely in the form of severe thunderstorms that could contain strong tornadoes and very large hail, also some uh, potential um, uh, damaging winds as well. Throughout these severe thunderstorms, um, we're also seeing an area of heavy snowfall into the Rockies, making its way into the high plains here. As we take this to early in, uh, early in the morning here on Sunday, we're still seeing some widespread heavy snowfall in the Rockies into the high plains here, even overnight. Uh, here would be by a little bit later into the morning on Sunday here. It's going to be a 999 millibar low pressure center at this time throughout northwestern Kansas. So this could even be a blizzard along with very heavy snowfall that could drop multiple feet of snow to the Rockies and the high plains here. Still very heavy snow, uh, some heavy rain, but also very gusty winds along with some uh, freezing grade and mixed, mixed precipitation as well here. Um, so here would be by a Sunday Sunday of the evening here, many areas again in the western or eastern Rockies and the high plains here getting on some very heavy snowfall along with some pretty gusty winds and still a squall line of moderate uh, rainfall here going out as well. Uh, as we take this a little bit later uh, into Sunday evening here, we're still seeing a widespread squall line of heavy rainfall making its way eastward currently in the Ozarks. Still an area of heavy snow to the north as well. Also an area of mixed precipitation in the middle of it. Uh, so here would be by uh, by uh, early in the morning on Monday here. Still seeing uh, that we could be looking at some uh, heavy snowfall to the north here. Potential for some heavy rainfall, especially moderate rainfall to the south. As we take this a little bit later here, we're still seeing um, some pretty heavy snowfall and pretty heavy rainfall. Not much has changed at this time here. It's gradually going to be weakening and will eventually start to die out um, by about uh, early Tuesday morning here. The storm will eventually die out. Um, so now we're going to do is take a look at our ice accumulation our snow accumulation, and our rain accumulation map so that we can see what the hazards are going to be for this storm, and then we'll close out the video. All right, so here would be our quantitative precipitation forecast for our total accumulated freezing rain according to our GDPS model here. As you can see, many areas in the Great Lakes states, along with some areas in the mid southern mid-Atlantic, are getting in on many ice accumulations over a quarter of an inch, many locations even over a half of an inch in northern Illinois, uh, western Virginia, and eastern West Virginia here. So pretty heavy uh, ice is expected in these regions here. That could definitely cause some hazardous conditions, so stay tuned for that. Our GFSC 16 model is pretty similar to what it usually is, a little bit further westward and a little bit less major. Um, so that's a, that's a good sign, at least the second one there. So some locations still could be experiencing over a quarter inch of accumulated freezing rain here, especially on the western sides in Illinois and Iowa here. Uh, some low spotty locations maybe could be getting on over a half of an inch, but a little bit less major in general. Our GDPS here, uh, again, is just showing some uh, locations that could be getting in again on over a half of an inch here, but it's pretty isolated, uh, mainly in Illinois. Some locations surrounding it, though, including, again, that area in the mid-Atlantic, uh, southern mid-Atlantic could be getting in on some ice accumulations, though, some spotty accumulations out west. Now let's take a look at our total accumulated snowfall maps here. We're going to be using our 10 to 1 ratio in inches here. This is a 10 to 1 constant snow to liquid ratio, so of course we have to factor in temperatures. Uh, but regardless here, here would be our ECMWF model. 
um, our high resolution model here, you can see out here in southeastern uh, Wyoming, western Nebraska, uh, southwestern uh, South Dakota here, and northern uh, Colorado, many areas getting in on over 24 inches of snowfall here, so likely over two feet. Um, again, many areas could be seeing multiple feet, and this could be historic here. Uh, we're also looking at the potential for uh, pretty strong winds as well, so this could very, very easily be a uh, very bad blizzard throughout these areas here. The heavy snow extends all the way into uh, eastern uh, Iowa here. If we take a look at our GFS model, this one's even worse for areas in the Rockies here. Many areas getting in on likely uh, over three feet of snowfall here. Uh, it's kind of going to take a break in South Dakota uh, before it eventually, or in uh, central South Dakota, before seeing another area of potentially major snowfall in southern Minnesota and northern Iowa here. Some spotty uh, heavy snow in uh, far northern Illinois, maybe even near Chicago and southern Wisconsin as well here. Uh, here will be our GFS V16 model, pretty similar to our uh, ECMWF. Still many areas well over two feet of snowfall in the uh, Rockies and the High Plains here. Many areas just east of that in uh, southeastern South Dakota and northeastern uh, Nebraska, or most of southern South Dakota here and some of northern Nebraska. Getting it on over a foot of snowfall uh, with still some major accumulations to the east as well. Uh, this would be our GDPS model here. Still very uh, many areas here, again, in the Rockies and the High Plains, even throughout pretty good into western Nebraska here, getting it on well over two feet of snowfall. And again, many accumulations here in Iowa are going to be getting it on likely over 10 inches as well. So that would be our snowfall again. This will likely be a, a historic event out there in the western sides of the snowstorm here. So a very major, you guys are definitely going to want to stay weather aware, not just for the intense, intense snowfall, but also for the strong winds as well. So please, 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 if you are in these areas here, please pay attention to the National Weather Service website um, when you get the chance to, because it is very important. Here would be our uh, total accumulated or aquatic precipitation forecast uh, for melted precipitation here. Uh, so as far as melted precipitation goes, this would all be by about 6 a.m. Central Standard Time Tuesday here. So many accumulations still. My main focus is mainly over southern Missouri here. Many accumulations over four inches expected in the uh, Ozarks into the uh, southern plains as well. Widespread accumulations over two inches in these dark green shades. That would be our, our European model. As we take a look at our GFS model, still a lot of areas even in Wyoming, Colorado, and again, Missouri getting in on likely over four inches. I do think that the, and also another area is uh, central Nebraska. I do think that many areas uh, will likely see, um, or in the central United States will likely see the highest here. Uh, you might also notice that we're seeing heavy rainfall mix in um, with that heavy snowfall that we're also going to hear very heavy snowfall in some spots here. Overall, I expect this to be a very, very major storm. Uh, storm as a whole, just for rain, snowfall, severe weather, this is going to be a bad event through the weekend here. If you take a look at our GFS V16 model, again, many areas over four inches throughout the central United States, even including some of western Kentucky and western uh, Tennessee here. And then finally, before we close out the video, here is our GDPS model. Look at that. Many accumulations here in Nebraska that's already going get, to get hit hard by the snow, including Kansas, uh, Wyoming, and Minnesota. Uh, also, maybe even some of uh, Oklahoma as well, getting in on over four inches here. Very heavy rainfall, very heavy snowfall, and severe weather is expected through the weekend here, so please stay weather aware. Um, again, if you did like this video and you want to see more videos like it, be sure to drop a like on the video uh, and share this video out if you want other people to see it as well. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel and make sure that if you do subscribe to the channel that you turn those post notifications on so that you won't miss an upload when I upload for you guys. But until the next video, please stay safe and we will see you guys back here in the next video, Phantom Squad.